Hi, this is Kate McKinnon with Contemporary Geometric Beadwork, and we're going to be assembling a kaleidocycle today. We're only going to be starting with three out of the possible four faces. This is a machine, as you probably know, that's built out of three sets of mirror tetrahedra. Tetrahedra are just boxes in which each side is a triangle face, so four triangles make one tetrahedra. But the neat thing that we've learned about these forms is that sometimes all you need are three triangles. For example, if you take one of our little six triangle arrangements here, this pretty little hexagon, and as we saw in a previous video, if you just punch it together, you've essentially formed a set of mirror tetrahedra, and the fourth face becomes optional. So we're going to leave that one off right now and do a very simple assembly of this net Let's see, let's make sure that everything is lining up where it's supposed to be. My triangles in the middle are going black, red, black, red, black, red. Perfect. It could be, you know, if I'm assembling in sections like we mentioned before, if you get a piece flipped over, you might panic in a way and think you got your pattern wrong. Uh, so let's just make sure everything's in order before I put the final pieces in. And uh, I'm going to put this triangle in here and make sure there's a hinge in there, just like there, and then put this triangle over here, make sure there's a hinge between there, and then I'm going to join these two right here at the hinge. Uh, a hinge is really simple in our minds. It's just an area where you've connected the beadwork with an extra round of beads. And so you can see in there, we are actually using clear beads for our hinge. And you can use beads that are the same color as your pattern if you wanted to. You could be using white beads here and red and black beads here. And you might not even be able to visually see that there's a hinge. I've called it out with clear beads because I want you to see the spaces in between these hinges so that you can understand why, you know, like a door opening and closing, this is going to hinge and turn a lot better than if you're just connected with uh, join beads. That leads for a somewhat lumpy and less precise connection. So when you go to lay out your little quilt here, the thing to do is be sure that if you have any hot corners, unique corners or special designs in your triangle that they're oriented in the correct direction. You'll notice in here, these are our hot corners here in Susanna Thompson's cycle here. You can see the blue there meeting in the middle and then scattering to the outside in neat groups of two. Well, the very important thing about this layout is that when you have a hot corner or a special design, uh, you're gonna, here's the unique corner in this one, you're gonna wanna make sure Oh, beautiful, right? This one actually uh, also looks like the warped hexagon cycles that we're making. Uh, you'll see some of those in our videos and in the bead-alongs. That's a very interesting note about that pattern. But at any rate, you'll notice that our hot corners are all pointing in or down. They're all at an angle. I wouldn't want my triangles pointing directly into the center with that point in. Otherwise, the pattern wouldn't work out in the turning machine. So. When you're assembling your cycles, this is always the case. If you have things that you want to end up in the center, be sure that they're pointing in one direction or the other. It really is almost as simple as that. So, here we go. Um, let's see, pick up my needle, show you what's going on here. Whether or not you use round seed beads or delicas, you know, whatever size those beads are, the only thing that's important is that they fit in your slots. If they don't fit, then you're going to have a lumpy machine. And the join beads need to go on one side, generally, before you put the pieces together. So what I'll be doing now is actually just attaching this triangle to the join beads that exist. And here's an interesting design note about these machines. You can join every single bead of the triangles together, or you can, like we do, not actually join them except for in the center. It just depends on how interested you are in your turning ability versus your graphic sense of being all one. So I prefer the engineering advantage of having them turn neatly. So what I tend to do is I put my needle through the beads like this and I just lace them together 
in a way that I can easily see what's going on. And once I've completed lacing all these beads together, that's the time I'll pull my thread tight. So I take my time with this join and I make sure. Now, see, this is very common. You can see that I'm not actually in the right place, am I? You think it may be in the right place, but whoops, my triangle is off of the line, right? So if you are mindful of what you're doing early on and handily, I'm not working with tail threads here. So any kind of assembly or de-assembly I do like this is going to be fairly easy for me. I'm not dealing with the structure of the triangles anytime I go to sew on a bead. So you can see that the correct bead to go through is right here. If I prefer not to involve this round bead in this sewing transaction, I'll just move my thread down to the cylinder bead and I'll start my stitch from cylinder bead to cylinder bead. None of these are hard and fast rules. The hinge is simply an extra row of beads. So uh, instead of joining from the seed beads to the other triangle, I'm adding one more row. And in my case, again, I don't like to hinge all the way to the top because it moves better if I don't. So I chose to have seven hinge beads in between the join beads, which still go all the way around the triangles, and only because I like that look. You can choose whatever look you like. Just be sure that your pieces are joined together in this sort of orientation, paying attention to the hot corners. Now, let me just run my needle around this piece and get these extra pieces in. You can see what, what I'm doing now with my joins. So let me get these extra pieces in. Then I will show you how to join this cycle together, leaving out the fourth face, and if you choose to do so, decreasing the open space into what looks like a set of open centered triangles to complete the form. Back with you as soon as I've sewed this together.